It's not like then you got a promotion at your job. Then you went and you won the world title. But that's a moment. That's one moment. It, and that moment's over. And it happened. And it's gone. And now it's five years later. How do you, as a, a martial artist, as a person who's thinking about this kind of stuff on the level that you do, how do you experience a high like that? And maintain optimism, maintain a positive mindset going through the rest of your life, stay invested, stay creative. How do you not let something so great just be a peak moment where everything after it is less than? And you constantly are reflecting mm -hmm. back on how wonderful this one thing was. I think it's easy to get caught in those traps in yeah. life or to get sucked into the down part when things are really shitty and just feel like that's the only thing that exists in your world. So how do you maintain that? How do you let mm -hmm. those experiences happen and still walk through with a head high and, mm -hmm. and still live a wonderful, beautiful life? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, it's just about, once again, purpose, understanding your inspiration. I mean, we're always these evolving creatures. And so, you know, if your sense of, of purpose or, or value or, uh, motivation or whatever, isn't something that, um, you know, is only about one thing, one moment, you know, you're missing out on so much else. Right. So, um, that is just one piece of my martial arts life. I'm still here learning and developing, trying to, to, to teach and pass it on as best as I possibly can. And I have a greater sense of purpose now because more and more it's, it's not about me. It's about those around me. Um, I'm a father now. Um, I, I gave, you know, well, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't give birth. <laughs> oh, I didn't give yeah. birth. Wild. All but, right. Hold on. We got to <laughs> restart this yeah. whole new podcast. Yeah. Here. Right. Right. Wild, uh, wild uh, times. <laughs> I, uh, I had my wife had, I was yeah. just holding her hand, <laughs> <laughs> um, last year for our twin babies, yeah. a boy and a girl, just incredible, oh, wow. you know, uh, unbelievable miracle. So, uh, and, and so much of what I'm doing today, uh, you know, talk about body and being able to move out, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm 40, I'm getting a little bit of a late start. So 10, 15 years from now, I got to be able to train my son, you know, or my daughter, whoever, whoever wants to beat me up the most, I got to be ready for it. And, uh, uh, you know, same thing with my students and just, um, and then I'm, you know, I, I have new goals, uh, new aspirations. Um, but to really sum it up, I'm going to give you a little bit of one of my mantras. All right. Um, yes, that, please. uh, that may or may not become something. All right. Yeah. Uh, as far as, uh, material I want to put out, um, down yeah. the line, but, uh, heard it know, here first in that, um, well, I, I've, I've said it a few other times. And if, if you look at, I hashtag it a lot and I even have an Instagram page for it now. Um, but this was something that I put in, in my trainings, you know, it was just like a, a martial arts athletic type thing. And then I've seen how it grows into just life in general. But, um, since I was a kid, you know, my dad, he, he, uh, he just pushed me hard and, uh, and he was a great coach, great teacher, um, and he always set the example. He was someone that um, that pushed himself, um, you know, so he could be better and make those around him better. And so I always just followed his his example. But uh, he would he would always push me hard, um, you know, and like tell me to dig deep and and you know finish strong and things like that. And I and I I grew to have this little saying that I would tell myself. Um, in my strength and conditioning, in my, in my jujitsu rounds, whatever. When it came down to that last round, I would tell myself the last round is my best round. And I would just tell myself that over and over and over again. And I would make sure that it was my best round. I would always try to end strong, you know, finish stronger than I started. And, um, and if it was sprints, if it was sparring, whatever it was, I wanted to give everything I had and make sure that that last round was my best round. And sometimes I could be real stubborn and maybe it wasn't my best round. I said, we got to go again. We got to go again. Right. You know, but what was so crazy is that world title fight came down to the fifth round. And this was my first time to ever do a fifth round. 
Um, and, you know, my opponent had done several. He had, you know, he's, he was a multiple time world champion. And so I'm in this fight, com very unexperienced compared to my opponent. He had five times the amount of fights of me, world-class experience, all this stuff. I'm a huge underdog. Um, and it comes down to that fifth round. We're two and two, right? So I won the first two. He won the second two. Now it's a tiebreaker. And the last round was my best round. He didn't touch me. Uh, I dominated that round. And I was saying that to myself right when it was time to go. And so were my coaches. Yeah. Um, and that just, it, it hit me once again, you know, uh, understanding how everything lines out the way it's supposed to. And now I just see that in life as a whole, because I needed, I needed to find some sort of positivity whenever the yeah. commission came back afterwards and, you know, they told me they were not going to let you fight anymore. You have to give up your belt, blah, 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 blah. And I spent a year and a half trying to convince the commission. I saw a doctor after doctor, specialist, UCLA, Cleveland Clinic. I was flying, traveling, getting all this information, giving it to them and just asking, give me, give me a chance to get back in there and try to get my belt back. Nothing. And I was shut down. Yeah. And... And at the same time, it was pandemic, all this stuff, had to close my business, you know, and I'm trying to come back to jujitsu and I'm not fired up, but I'm just like my, I had some up and down performances and all this thing. And then I had to come to terms like, okay, I may never fight again. Let's get over it. Exactly what you're talking about. And, and I, this just special phase of life started where it's like, okay, you know, there's more and. Uh, that belt didn't need to define me as hard as it was to win it and let it go and all that. Um, my last round can still be my best round. Life goes on, you know, whatever is next. It, I'm only getting better. I'm smarter. I'm more grateful for everything. I have, you know, family, amazing wife, kids. I get to live my passion every day. You know, what is my new purpose? So let's realign, find the new purpose, make the biggest impact you can make and keep going and keep going because the best is always yet to come when you don't give up, you know, it just keeps getting better. And, uh, and that's where my headspace has been these last few years. And then now I'm in my, you know, I just turned 40, I'm 40 and I'm putting up some of the best performances I've had in my career <laughs> in jujitsu and grappling. Um, and people, you know, they're like, Whoa, what's going on? And I was supposed to be retired, <laughs> but, uh, all these opportunities kept coming to me and I got to come back and do one more fight um, in December of last year for New Year's Eve in Tokyo. And uh, you won. And I won. And, uh, and it was beautiful. And I got to do it and hold my babies in the ring with me afterwards. And it was like, well, this is even better. This is the best. You know, this yeah. is that last <laughs> round, best round moment. And, uh, you know, I never gave up. And that's why it happened.